that will take a minute to come through. Very good. Just trying to find the live feed. It says we're still in preview. Maybe not, maybe we are. I think we're live. Yeah, I think so. The, the dot's red on the bar at the bottom. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Cool. Uh, find the, um, need to find the actual link to this so we can share it. <laughs> <laughs> Minus the first few minutes, maybe. Ah, it's good. Ah, uh, We should have it available. There we go. So we're on there. Yeah. So I think oh, we're good. So I think on. we're good, Mike. Basically, nice. how are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, I'm good. Good to see you. So we're going to do a we're going to do somewhat of an impromptu little broadcast here. Fairly simple setup because we've uh, we've got the window open. It's really hot in here. You're going to see me grotesquely sweating, no doubt, in here today because <laughs> it gets really, really hot when. When we do these recordings, and uh, I don't really have a, a mechanism for turning that off. So anyway, so we're going to do a bit of a review of the of the tour last week, yep. Mike. So uh, for for anyone who didn't uh, attend, Mike, which you know, first of all, why not? Uh, would be a good question. <laughs> but secondly, do you want to just give people a rundown of um, of what we did and and why we did it? Okay, yeah. So um, you may have to help me out of where we went, but <laughs> as it turned out, my geography is not very good. Uh, so we started off in Worthing, then we went up to Essex, Harlow. Um, Peterborough, Peterborough, not Petersfield, Peterborough. <laughs> um, where are we after that? Uh, Lincoln. Lincoln, then. Uh, but Scunthorpe, Scarham, Scun Preston, Macclesfield. Um, then we, where did we finish on the Swindon. last day? Bir Birmingham, and Swindon, Birmingham for, and Swindon for the last day. And and why? What was the? What so, was all this about then, Mike? So we did a. Um, so there was ten places. Um, each place we went to, we set up a classroom. And we had some some colleagues come along and take part in a classroom model, um, which is, essentially is a blended learning classroom. Um, takes the best features of uh, a traditional classroom and the best features of online learning and blends them together um, into what would be considered by us currently as best practice classroom. Yeah, um, I think I think that I think that's a nice summary of it. I mean, we I think it's fair to say that we we put ourselves out on a limb, really. Yeah, we were a bit nervous. A bit of future classroom. I, I I remember there being a hell of a lot of relief after the Monday morning Worthing Mon session yeah, when Monday we had night. nine more to come, and basically that first one confirmed for us that that session theoretically could work as yeah, a we, C CPD environment. Yeah, we had a real nice bunch in Worthing. Um, real good teachers, though. I think they gave us a bit of confidence. Mm. They were nice to us. Yeah, uh, everyone was nice to us. To be fair, everyone we met some really really great people. And um, I I think it's probably worth mentioning like some of the highlights of this classroom that that we've. That we've gone out there and delivered in front of people. I mean, for, first and foremost, we've delivered a classroom, a classroom model to hundreds of teachers. I think we had well over two hundred <coughs> teachers attend mm -hmm. with us, and we've we've delivered a, a classroom model with no front to the classroom whatsoever, yep. and with no idea of a teacher-paced learning environment. That the, the, the yep. learning environment was entirely student-paced. Yeah, and I think for a lot of teachers, it was. It seemed, at least to me, that that was, in a really positive way, a culture shock. And something which had not been proposed to them before. Yeah, and even in the session, maybe maybe not after we'd actually demonstrated the model, but certainly before when we were just talking about the model, lots of people were thinking like, "What? So you don't you don't do any pre-learning either? You don't teach them first and then let them go and explore different areas?" Yeah, you know, it was like, "No, this is this is it. This every experience here is is a first uh, first taste. There's no there's no delivery from the teacher to start with." I think that was a bit of a shock for a lot of people. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you about that. One of the things that I think really startled people, or who am I to say what startled people, but one of the things I think that people really noticed is that we, we had a situation there where there was no teacher guidance in the traditional center at the start of the session. Students yeah. entered the room, they came in, and they automatically self-directed their way through a series of resources and experiences. They had teaching, but the teacher was not from a human being transmitting that information. Not live in the classroom. Not live in the classroom. Instead, at least theoretically, <coughs> they had access to the very, very, very best online teacher. Yeah. Who, I'm not, it sounds rude because I, I, currently I do that delivery, but theoretically or idealistically, the, the access to the best online teacher for explaining things to them possible. Yeah. And that's where the content delivery comes. But the point you made there, I think, is really interesting. When we had a classroom where it was very, very possible, in fact, a lot of the, uh, the learners did this, was that the first access to a, a new topic or new content or new skill that somebody had was through something like a worksheet yeah. or an activity sheet because that worksheet, activity sheet, targeted the concept of intuition. And I think that's, a, I think that's something I brought out of that experience really strongly. Yeah, I think that was probably the... Th I think lots of things came out of it. Lots of things were confirmed for us that mm. we had expected. Yeah. Um, so, so we learned a lot about the direction. I think essentially we came out thinking, yeah, we're going in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. Um, but the thing that's shone out for probably both of us, I guess, is that this idea of intuition is seriously lacking. Yeah. Um, it, even when we're talking about this with, with teachers, it's kind of a hard thing to get your head around that. Yeah you don't have to be taught something in the traditional sense through some sort of direct instruction and then go and apply it. It can be the other way around. You can go and experience something and then learn about it after. And, and that's a really interesting thing that not many people are doing, I don't think. I think that's fascinating. And we had a long talk about it on the trip last week. And we, we, I mean, is it fair to say broadly that what we currently understand as intuition is a conceptual grasp of an idea or a concept but it is the stage before kind of a, a, a linguistic framework or a formal framework has been placed around that concept. So before learning, say, the key language of center of mass, which is one of the things that we were looking at, the student, the learner, gets to experience the fundamental principle of center of mass and then later apply all of the linguistics around it. So it's almost... It, it honors the idea that a thought in the mind is initially non-linguistic. It's conceptual, <clears throat> and then later the language can be can, can wrap around that that conceptual construction. Yeah. It sounds a little bit heavy, this, but we saw it for real in the classroom, right? Yeah, I think so. I think oh, it's a really nice definition. We were in the car driving to one of the sessions, and we were talking about this idea, and then you came up with that little gem that intuition is kind of a a, a thought or a feeling that's pre-language, and it kind of it might even last a moment, I guess. It might just—it's that kind of like penny dropping moment, I mm -hmm. guess. It's that it is a feeling, mm -hmm. and and we I did a little bit of research one night over dinner about what is intuition, and lots of people yeah. describe it as that just that feeling before we've learned something, before we've been taught, before we have any kind of technical knowledge, just that kind of real graspable thing. There, there'll um, be a, there, there'll be a lot of people who listen to a conversation like, uh, like this, and their first instruction, their their first thought might be, "Well, that's really really nice, and it sounds it sounds all pretty and woolly," um, but I've just got to prepare them for the exam. I mean, what yeah. would, what would your what would your thoughts on that be? Well, I, I think probably that there's a certain reality to that, but if you have an intuitive understanding, we know we talk about this word already. It's not like it's a new word. If you have an intuitive understanding of something, it just means you get it. So surely, in order to prepare students for the exam, we should just make sure they get it. They should just have this intuitive yeah. understanding. Otherwise, we just ask them to remember loads and loads of stuff. But, but I think I and think that's a lot of people do it. I think a lot of teachers. I think I think some teachers are, would argue that's exactly what I mean. I've I've yeah. heard that from pr principal examiners. Teach them what they need to know. Here's the list of the six key things you must remember. Type ideas. Yeah, and that's I mean, common. Would, like here's the things. Here's on this PowerPoint. Here's the things you need to know. Write these yeah. down. Learn them. And, yeah. and then it comes to revision and just revise, remem remember those things. Okay, so this this is all nice and it's a, it, it feels good to be talking about worksheets for intuition, tasks for intuition. But So what, what does this classroom look like, Mike? I mean, give, give us a little description of what we did in 10 schools um, last week. Successfully, I must add, in, in 10 schools. I think it's important we stress that. Yeah, successfully. And with different numbers of people from, I don't know what it was, 14 was the lowest, 14, 15 up to 46. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's it's workable under those conditions but so essentially four areas first area being um a quiet study space this is traditionally where your, t your typical worksheet um 
paper-based resources happen, worksheets, mark schemes, past paper questions, uh, anything that's kind of a quiet paper-based resort, mm-hmm. resource uh, happens there. Think about holidays there. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Um, then your next area would be the play space, which is anything that's kind of a... Li- it's going to have this sort of rumble in the play space. It's going to be a, not a noisy area. Nobody's smashing plates, but just an area of, uh, of, of doing. It's mm-hmm. where your hands are doing something, building, making, breaking, modeling, um experimenting all these kind of things that yeah. are that in, are. in our classroom we had we had a lot of uh, a lot a lot of our learners were, were gluing um straws as vector illustrations over yeah. the top of so you're, you're literally manipulating things with your fingers to have them the right size the right angle the yeah. right position a lot of people may look at that and go well why not just draw it it's the same thing but there's yeah. there's something about make that if you're going to draw a line and then a vector say and then draw another vector that's got to be exactly twice the length it's kind of nice to do that with with straws and be able to measure yeah put those two short straws next to the long straw, make sure they're the same, kind of just in, uh, enhances that, um, in, you know, it deepens that uh, uh, idea in their head. Um, so then the, the third space would be um, the devices space where they're going to take their online tutorials. And this is one thing that I think some people um, had to get their head around, which is that if you're going to remove the instruction from the teacher in the classroom, you, you have to replace it somehow. And the way we we're suggesting to do that is with an individual device per student um, within that space. Within that specific, space, not yeah. not necessarily that you need thirty iPads in your classroom. Understand? Just that there may be a table of six iPads, and then students visit that area where it suits them. And it's it's very and interesting, it, right? That to to take teaching, yeah, right. So the space you're going to talk about next in a minute is the space where the traditional teacher is most likely to be, because it's like the small group coaching area. Yeah. But that teacher, James or Mike or whoever, they're not going to sit there and they're not going to teach stuff to somebody because that's been done in that terminal's devices space. The instruction is there. So therefore, the job of that person becomes more of a coaching role to, to coax that information out of um, um, out of the student rather than be instructed by that thing. I'm just yeah. going to take a little <laughs> pause there we've because got the we've got some visitors there. Oh, hey, Georgina, how are we? What's the plan? Do you want to come in? Okay. Do you want to take? Do you want to take my take the card? Do you take my yeah, I got mine. Yeah. Do you want to let yourselves in, guys? You know how to do it, Georgina. Okay. So we're gonna have. <laughs> see you later. See you, Sahara. So we're gonna we're gonna have a little visitor, Georgina. I'm gonna get her to uh, get her to press the buttons and nice. ch- and change she's things love it. change things over <laughs> for us as well. But she's gonna gonna be our little helper in here. So yeah. So I think one of the things that came across really strongly for me is that because we've got the teaching available in that teaching in that terminal space, just the instruction, just the explaining, then what the small group teaching space becomes is not another place for instruction, yeah. live instruction. It's much more a coaching space, a review space, a target setting space, and questions. That, questions. And one of the things I, I said over and over and over to, albeit colleagues in um, in in that coaching space, in that fourth space, was they, they I would ask them a question and they would sort of give me their answer and they they oh, I think it's I think it's X Y or Z, and I'd say to them, are you, are you asking me or are you telling me that that's the answer? And what of course I'm asking them to do is I'm asking them in their own mind to decide whether they know that or they think that or they're unsure yeah. of it or they're certain of it. And also, it, it kind of helps people to overcome that, that idea of worrying about being wrong in front yeah. of somebody else. Yeah. One of the things I'm proudest of, about last week is that I think we made every single person in those sessions, oh, well over 200 teachers, every single one of them struggle yeah. in that session because we <clears> challenged every single one at the level that they need to be working at. Yeah, And we kept saying, didn't we, that we want people to struggle. In this classroom, we want people to struggle. And obviously, we... We don't necessarily just want them to struggle and that be the end point. We want them to overcome the struggle and have the feeling of overcoming a struggle. Um, so, so they get that feeling of success. But in order to do that, we have to set up scenarios where they're going to yeah. struggle. So, so what we're going to do here is we, we've got a new helper in. Let, mm-hmm. me just, let me just sort of put her in there. Get her on, get her on the, the camera here. Hey, so come to help us. I'm, Georg- I, I'm still on at the moment. Are you still on? So, so Georgina, what you need to do is every time I speak, you need to hit number one. Okay, so that's it. Hit it. So that that see that puts the green the the red around me now, and you can see me. And now Mike's going to say <clears> something <throat> again. Something something again. And you're going to switch it to him. So as soon as the conversation go, goes back to one or the other, like me now, Georgina, conversation's on me, isn't it? So where's, ah, <laughs> very good. So what we need to do is we want you to keep up with the conversation, and as we switch the conversation, we want you to switch. Now you can do it with the touch screen if you want to. 
So as it switched back to mic, you could just t touch mic on the touchscreen if you want. And cool. now, and now oh, Mike yeah. can speak. You got it? Nice. Okay, so it's back with me now because I'm speaking, isn't it? <clears> All right, <throat> so we've got, we got our little technician <laughs> in place. You're happy with that, Georgina? Nice work. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I was really proud of that. I mean, I think we got 200 teachers throughout that session struggling. And, and genuinely but, uh, overcoming it. Yeah, struggling and genuinely overcoming that. And of course, when you when you struggle and genu and genuinely overcome something, what happens? You learn something. Yeah. And and then there, what was really nice was you got that that moment where people wanted to carry on. So you you would stop the session, say, because it's, we ran out of time. We got to go to the next one, but people were were not stopping. That was amazing. Was nice. That was amazing, wasn't it? That was that was really amazing. We we literally had to wrestle the session out of people's hands at yeah. the end. Sessions that almost everybody, when we announced we were going to do some mechanics and some fluid dynamics, yeah. the first thing people said was, <gasps> oh, oh my God, no. I, I can't do that. I can't. Yeah. We got so much of that learned helplessness yeah, out of it was, it was learners. Funny. It was amazing, really. And then by the end of that session, rather than that feeling of learned help, of course, what they'd experienced was a genuine feeling of truly learning something that they had done themselves. Yeah. So, of course, what they wanted was that feeling to yeah. carry on. Yeah, definitely. And Yeah. There's this thing on Twitter the other day, a little conversation about direct instruction mm. about and somebody saying that you can't genuinely learn something unless you unless you've been directly instructed in it. And that, so for a week there was no direct instruction and probably the most learning that those teachers had 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 in a in a session like that for well, a long time probably. I think I think we have to be honest say we do pro we we were provided direct instruction. Of course we can make a we can make a statement such as direct instruction is absolutely critical to affect direct instruction from an expert is absolutely critical to be effective in the learning journey. I would broadly agree with that. My mm. simple question would be why do we make an assumption that the that direct instruction has to come from a one pace fits all yeah. transmission <clears throat> teacher at the front of a class when at, by definition if we go across all of the classrooms in the UK say by definition the standard that that instruction is going to be at is the average standard. Yeah. Why don't we get the best standard yeah. available to every single student? And that's the thing, right? All we all we're really replacing, all we're really trying to say that should change is that the person explaining stuff changes. Yeah. Not not the teacher. Yeah. There's still a, a massive amount of of um, roles and facets to the job of being a teacher, mm. which does isn't done by the video. The, the video just explains the thing. Yeah. So, so we're not. This is definitely not about replacing teachers. I think people were very clear on that in the session that yeah. you have to have a teacher in the classroom to make this model work. I completely agree. Or, or, or change their word. You have to have a coach or a facilitator or whatever you want to call them in the room. Yeah. And that is a much much higher skill level. That was one of the things that kept coming back as well was that if I'm not confident as the teacher in this certain topic, I don't think I could do this because yeah. I'm going to be on that small group teaching table and people are going to come and ask me questions about anything. I'm not sh confident. I'm not sure if I could do that. What, one of the things that that highlighted for me was that, that the cl it was a clear evidence to the extent to which the teaching profession generally leans on its resources, such as its slides yeah. of whatever kind. Here's my teaching it on a slide. Yeah. Well, I, this is no comment on Microsoft or Prezi or I don't care what method anyone uses. But what it does suggest is that there's a whole bunch of colleagues who are not instructing as such rather than they are presenting something. Well, those things were set up as presentation software. That is present, yeah. They're not, te they're not teaching software. No. PowerPoint was never made for teaching. It just so happened to be quite handy for teachers to make their notes and on. Download and download searchable by yeah, file then, type yeah, and exactly. downloadable. Yeah, right. So <laughs> th those things are never meant for t teaching. They're, they're presentation. So you can present your ideas on that. And all we're doing is replacing that presentation yeah. of ideas with the, uh, with the video on the iPad. And we're saying that the, the actual really skillful part of being a teacher is done by the teacher in the room on that small group teaching space. Yeah, I, I think that's a really fascinating point because, as you said, we are only literally suggesting, the only change that we are suggesting is that the reception of information into the mind of the student is not received by the transmission from a, from a teacher at the front. Everything else, I would say, is pretty much universally the same. The same designs of the classroom, the same shapes, although there might be some stuff to but do. But all the other later. things that change are knock-on effects. Exactly. Of that. You know, they're, they're just and they and everybody would come to the same conclusion or similar, probably. Maybe there's others. Maybe we just don't know. But and, and that'd be really interesting to see. But if you if you replace the where the information is coming from and it's not coming from the teacher, then um, th there are certain knock-on effects of that. 
like you yeah. would probably naturally come to the same conclusion that you should have different zones in your classroom yeah without without being told that but one of the, one of the things as well that was interesting for me is like we've got the zoned classroom and often now i think now i think about that really only has two two purposes having the zones one is just resource management where you put your resort where you put your paper where you put your folders near yeah, yeah. there's that and the only other thing is that when we present the idea, it has like a visual impact to people. Now, there's no reason why someone can, couldn't sit in the same space and take tutorial, worksheet, activity sheet, um, uh, coaching from a teacher. It, it's simply pr how you choose to present the classroom yeah. that, actually, that actually matters. But certainly the key device that needs to be in there is that we have to, as immediately as possible, remove the requirement for the teacher to be the transmission device. I am more certain than ever that that is a very immediate step that we as a profession need to take. Yeah. And, I, and I said this a couple of times last week, even if we make an assumption that whoever is watching this and perhaps is disagreeing or worrying or whatever, even if we make an assumption that that person is the most gifted present, presenter and teacher of information, explainer of information that's ever worked, walked on the face of the earth, that person can have that. I'll give it to them that you can have that. Even if that's the case, the fact that you transmit that thing once in one day, at one less than one hour in the year whatever and the student can never ever come back to that experience means that whatever however good that model is it cannot beat this model yeah. this this model will beat it every single time even if the teaching we have online is kind of average teaching yeah which but, it isn't it's but, very very but good to teaching. be clear we're not then just saying well no need for teachers no 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 the teacher is just somewhere else in the room exactly the teacher's doing the thing that most people got into teaching for which was to work with students exactly and to have conversation to find out about them on on a on an academic and content level but also on a more personal level yeah. there, there, anybody in those sessions hopefully would have seen that you as the teacher got around to almost every student in the yeah. classroom. Yeah, a one-to-one. -one. It's an interesting point. A one-to-one -one every single lesson. With every student. We, and those <laughs> students still taking razor-sharp, high-quality teaching, like the highest quality teaching that's available. Yeah. And they got one, a one-to-one -one session every single lesson. Yeah. And, and even teacher. if they didn't, even if they yeah. got one-to-one -one every three lessons. Yeah. Let's say they had... Well, even one-to-ten would be a well, massive say, growth. Say they had ten, ten minutes of your time every three lessons. That works out more quality time with the teacher than they currently get, which is basically zero yeah. or, or very, very small yeah. amount of time, quality time with the teacher. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think that's important. In, in our model, we, we, we don't particularly consider quality time or valuable time with the teacher to incorporate the one pace fits all transmission of information. Yeah. In a world where that can be done far more efficiently today, we don't consider that to be a valuable resource yeah. in the classroom. And in, we the, were, in the current model, mm. it's very, very valuable. Exactly. <laughs> it has to be. Like, it has to be It's there. the most valuable thing in that classroom is the teacher teaching the information. Yeah. But in this model, it's not valuable at all because it's already ha that process is effectively automated because it's online mm. and the student can take it repeatedly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a really interesting point. You know, in the current model, teaching from the front of the classroom is an absolutely central and pivotal resource and probably the vast majority of lesson observation type quality assurance processes go into supporting that process and, how, yeah. and the quality of that process <clears throat> what we're saying is that in the model that we work in and that we're developing actually it has no value at all or no. very very little value because that part of the instruction is automated leaving uh, the teacher in the room to be a much, much, much yeah. more interesting coach, higher level performer, and probably a better paid teacher as well. Yeah, hopefully. And and the one of the questions is, well, where does the teacher get the time from? Mm. To because we're we're asking the teacher to do lots of things. This isn't yeah. like uh, that you play the video, students plug themselves in, take their own video, and you kick back and do nothing, and you just have a cushy fifty minute lesson. Mm. It's like no, you you are target setting, you are coaching, you're asking uh, questions of students. Um, and, and repeated questions like why, 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 why does that happen? To get down to that point of intuition. Yeah. And with every student in the class, it's like, well, where do I get the time to do all those things? Well, of course, that comes from the fact that you're no longer presenting mm. and, and you're no longer managing from the front. And I think the other thing, that, the other place that time comes from is, is just a, a feeling, really, because, of course, in this model, students are working at exactly the pace which is relevant to the individual student. That means, by definition... The student is experiencing far more challenge. They're far more likely to have questions. Those questions are far more likely to come to you to out themselves for those for those misunderstandings, those problems to be to be dealt with or to te to be teased out. Yeah. And then you have the, the 
the possibility of, of intervening with that and, and, and fulfilling or filling in that mastery deficit which, which exists. And I, I mean, I, I think back to that when we're on tour and we, uh, uh, colleagues like Sharon Dowd, for example, yeah. I mean, the level of challenge and learning that she experienced in, in, in that session was really, really high. And yeah. she, she's just a symbol, I think, of, in my <clears throat> mind at least, she's a symbol of a much broader picture that was being developed, which was people truly, deeply, deeply, deeply learning and applying their learning. It was such a rich experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't emphasize that to people. I, I, I also want to sort of take this opportunity as well when I'm thinking about it. It's like we, we have a ma massive debt of gratitude to a number of people, I think, you know. Um, <clears throat> You know, I want to mention a couple of people that allowed us to do that. Like, so I mentioned your partner. Am I okay to mention her full name? Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mentioned, um, I want to mention Hannah as well. Like, just awesome that she let you go off for a week, you know, with, know, with a me week, living. A week's grace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only only um, with Mila only four months old. So massive yeah. thanks to her. But um, also I wanted to make special mention of the of all the hosts, if I can remember everyone. So so from uh, from Jenny to Dan to Steve up to Gary up in Lincoln uh to phil to louise up in durham uh then we uh where do we where do we go from there we went over durham, to preston so we went over to preston who did we see in preston ah that was tony or yeah. it was, uh it, it was his his colleague tom, <coughs> tom actually looked tom. after us on the day because tony was away on on his trip um then we were down to see hannah, hannah. and matt slade also there it was busy really, day really they had. yeah really they did, mental they did really day. well too. unbelievable they had sports day then us then parents even. it was ridiculous and they did well too and, and then and then on the last day of course we saw we saw mickey and we finished off with although we didn't meet sophie it was sophie that arranged it and we, yeah. we finished off with chris dobbs down in, in swindon as well so for you guys who hosted us i mean i just wanted to say a deep deep thank you to you because without you guys that tour wouldn't have happened i mean i think it's you know really crucial to say how important you guys were and then again for everybody that attended um you know i think about the people that attended three till half five on a friday yeah. afternoon when yeah. it was non-compulsory you know yeah. amazing at, you know cy bradbury really good example Stu maddox loads of people on that friday afternoon karen davies loads and loads of people yeah. but, um helen philpott helen yeah. philpott was on maternity leave yeah. and attended i mean yeah. amazing really on a friday afternoon and all of the attendees, I mean, I've, I've got some like real highlights in my mind of people that we work with just because we're in the classroom space. I'm working with Martin Livesey on that first morning, you know, <coughs> yeah. and um, he was really pushing himself to, to get that biomechanics uh, right. Um, Sharon Dowd, Steph Bottoloso. I mean, there's loads. It's not fair to mention a couple because we work with so many. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a real privilege. And I also wanted to say for anybody who was booked and didn't attend and didn't let us know, I mean, you really missed out. I mean, bluntly, I mean, mm. you, you've, you've had a nightmare there yeah. because we... <laughs> We had a we had fun, fantastic sessions and it was um, really nice when we I think we were at, um it was the Deepings mm. and we we were we were in a room next door to another meeting that was going on yeah business managers meeting yeah. and and maybe there was real great things happening in that meeting maybe. I don't know but there's so many meetings that go on so many CPD sessions which, which by the way are much more expensive than ours which was free yeah um where the level of conversation was just is just it's embarrassing so, Mike it's so what? much lower you know just and, and obviously there's there's like operational things that happen during the day. Of course, the you have meetings to do some meetings, that are of boring course. and operational, but n nobody is really talking about this stuff. Yeah, well I mean I am going to I'm going to say as well. I mean we we had some other big hitters who presented with us on the same day in certain places. Now I didn't see their presentations some yeah. big star teachers who were on there. I I would take the old Pepsi test, Pepsi Coca-Cola mm. flavor test with any of them any day of the week. To, to talk to, to see what the rel the, the level of relevance inside provocation that we had within that session yeah. so for people that were meant to attend and didn't let us know and didn't um and, and didn't get along i mean for god's sake get yourself along to, to when we do this next year in yeah. 2018 because you i mean I, I really feel people have missed out on a great opportunity here and yeah. um but we'll do it again we'll we'll put it in again and it'll yeah. be slightly different slightly better mm -hmm. in 2018 we'll have learned and we'll have improved it as well of course but you know, I, I think I've got another feeling about it as well. And obviously, we got we got fantastic attendance this week, so I don't want to sort of look at it negatively. It's like people need to back this stuff. You know, yeah. if 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 we're going to go out on a limb and and put ourselves out in this way, I felt the same when we did the CPD event uh, last Monday, and we got about two thirds attendance. It's like we're going to put this out. We're going to provide it for you for free. Turn up, yeah, because it's unreasonable. If you can't make it, then we understand. But if we've if we're going to be there, and you say you're going to be there. And you're not there, and you don't give an explanation. Yeah, I mean, I don't respect. I mean, I really don't. Yeah. Um, that that's that needs to that needs some some reflection because I tell you what, every time I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Yeah. And I suggest 
everyone else should. Well, we had lots of likewise. reasons why we maybe wouldn't have turned up to some of those sessions. Yeah, we did have a couple of reasons, <laughs> didn't we? Uh, <laughs> so, and we and we made it. You know, but worked hard to get there because we didn't want to let schools down so well I, I remember on one of these previous broadcasts that we did mike one of the things we said was are we gonna get there yeah, on time? we almost didn't because <laughs> it was it was a kind, number of occasions yeah it was kind of an interesting experience and like on um on, on the monday evening we'd, we'd had our day in um worthing and then later in harlem we'd driven up to peterborough so we'd done some miles already that day and um we got into this really nice bed and breakfast. Really lovely it was. Delamere Farm near Peterborough. If anybody ever needs to stay near Peterborough, beautiful. Yeah, real that. nice. Really nice. Like, and actually, we, we, I don't, can't, we can't mention we can't mention the accolade thing. that they've won. What is on the telly <laughs> uh, um, about bed and breakfasts? But um, let's just say it's a nice place and it's yeah. reasonably priced. But anyway, that's a little plug for them. Uh, that was to uh, Aggie and what's Aggie his name? And Aggie and Steve. Steve. Aggie Steve was the guy I nearly ran over with the car because <laughs> he didn't realise it was electric, <laughs> didn't know it was moving. Um, but yeah, basically, while while with them, I drove over something very a big big hunk of metal, and the and the and the the rear uh, near side tire literally exploded. So we got recovered the next morning, went and got it fixed. Mike went off. Aggie, bless her, the woman at the B and B, took him up to the session in Peterborough. Mike started the session. Um, I went to get the wheel changed, got on the low load, I got picked up, da, 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 got there, and then yeah, got back, got up to the school in Peterborough afterwards. And then and then we did the session. Great session with Steve Allen and those guys there. Uh, Logan, another real yeah, real top, star, yeah. top kind of delegate student for yeah, me. He stood out. He really stood out. Yeah, and. Um, Anyway, so we packed up, we got away, we were literally first few metres driving out of the parking bay that we were in at Deepening School, and I turned left too sharply and caught the very same <laughs> just changed back wheel <laughs> on a, a, a corner of curbing, and it popped the tyre You, couldn't, you couldn't ride it. Couldn't ride it, and then we, of course, we then ended up with a situation where, yeah, we got picked up by the same guy, <laughs> <laughs> he was giggling, took us to the same garage, <laughs> <laughs> it was funny when it you know. <laughs> took us to the same garage. They were all they they were worried at the garage because they thought they'd misfitted the tire, yeah, which were, of course panicking. Yeah, they were panicking and of course in reality it was just me that screwed up <laughs> twice. And uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so and then we maybe we managed to just get up to Lincoln, didn't we, in the afternoon? Yeah. We get, we'd go, was it what's that, Georgina? Yeah, well that actually that was another interesting thing about the tour, Mike. I don't yeah. know what you thought. I mean, that second weight in that garage and that quick fit, that was that was we, the, we were desperate for something to eat, and there was nothing but a McDonald's on this industrial estate. So Mike went off and, and got us McDonald's. What was it called? The thing? Chicken, chicken something? legend. Chicken legend. And I haven't eaten a McDonald's since I was, I think I would have been less than twelve years old. Yeah. And I got this barrier of kind of hating McDonald's and sort of <laughs> thing, thinking, oh man, it's like the devil's food. And I still sort of think that it was really nice. So yeah. it really annoyed me that it was nice. It well, really, the, next, the next day. Yeah, the, yeah, the next, yeah. The next day, we went to we stopped off at a services somewhere on the way other, to Durham. Yeah, yeah. And the choice was McDonald's or Costa. And Costa have you know like a little panini or toast for you or a sandwich or something. Yeah. And you were you were, I know, just drawn into the uh, golden arches. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have guilt about this. I um I do feel I do feel a little bit guilty about this. It's kind of, it's like it's like food crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, maybe there's something in that. Yeah, I mean, literally, maybe <laughs> yeah. there's something in that. I'm sure there is. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was, yeah, well, I mean, they obviously make it so that it, it, it catches your attention. Yeah, and you're hungry after an hour. Yeah, mm. there's that as well. But yeah, I, I on both, on all kinds of levels, I hadn't eaten that stuff for a long, long time. And then I fell into the trap of having of having one and then end up with two. I don't know if it's going to be 20 years till I have another one. <laughs> I mean, Georgina, what's your view on this? Because, I mean, we don't stop you kids going to McDonald's, do we? But we certainly don't encourage you to go. It's all right, but the chips are a bit like soggy. So you say you don't like? No, I I like the meat. Um, but the um, but it's a bit. It's sort of like if you you're you're like encouraged not to go there, and you're encouraged that the food encouraged that the food's like. Um, dirty and stuff, but um, it's all right. <laughs> I have to admit that I might not have previously given the, the best impression of McDonald's to my children, Georgina. I think that's probably fair <clears throat> to say. I mean, it's for a good reason, and I still hold that view, but I think it's just the case that maybe it's just a really convenient thing to every now and then if you're desperate to have. I don't know if I can qualify that for the second go. <laughs> 
but yeah, it's, no, uh, not. Nah, yeah. Yeah, and then we had another incident breakfast in where are we Cumbria somewhere. Yeah, it's Kirkby Stephen. Kirkby Stephen, mm. middle of nowhere, beautiful place. Mm, um, beautiful. Stayed at the Nate Bean. Nice, nice recommend, place. Recommend that as well. Yeah, that's a good place. I, they, I mean, to be fair, I'm gonna. This is gonna sound like I'm gonna bad mouth them <laughs> because they were really kind. Getting yeah, they're very, solving they're the problem you're gonna kind, describe. Yeah. But the but the smell of stale gravy in that dining hall yeah, was unbelievable. That carvery had been running for a few years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, bas- basically, well, I, you go ahead, Mike. You, you tell them what you uh, used to do. So I had, had breakfast. Um, I don't know what it was. The combination of the beer the night before or the black pudding that morning. I'm not sure. Um, I must have scrambled the brain because so I had my laptop and my iPad and chargers and house keys, car keys in my bag, and then just left it by the table. And then we got down to the next school, wherever that was. Mm. Um, that was down it. That was in Preston. That was Tom's, wasn't it? In yeah. Preston. Yeah, and then unpacking the car. I said, oh, James, I, I haven't got my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's in the Nate Bean in the breakfast room. So I phoned him. Chris, bless him. He had it and he found it and locked it in the office for us and then managed to get it couriered. Met us at your mum and dad's house. That's right. Probably the best meal of the week, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, that was good, wasn't it? So. Man. Well, Diane did as a treat, didn't she? she massive, uh, massive, great big salad. Unbelievable. I, t- I warned, I warned Mike before before we got involved with this. Before we arrived there, that she would definitely overdo it. And she does have a tendency to do that, yeah. doesn't she? <laughs> oh, Christmas no. dinner is wild, isn't it? Um, yeah, and she she made about four different meals yeah, in one. Right. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then it's, she's she's the kind of woman though. She I think I said she might the other day that she'll. She'll make a she'll make a like a curry, really nice I don't know, chicken curry or something with rice, and they'll have naan bread, and there'll be pickles and all that. And she, and then she'll start, like an hour before dinner, start worrying there's not enough. So she'll make like a massive lasagna <laughs> just to go with it. <laughs> no, it's kind of anyway. So we had a nice people there, your mum and dad. Yeah, they're they're good people. They're they're all right. They when they behave themselves, they're, they're all right. And then um and then yeah, and then we finished off down in um finished off down in Birmingham. I really enjoyed Birmingham. Joseph Chamberlain. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, what a Joseph place. Joseph Chamberlain, Sixth Form College. Yeah, real nice. Mickey Riddle. Mickey Riddle, real nice guy, lovely fella. Uh, I can't remember the guy we met in reception. who's was also a nice bloke, wasn't he? Yeah, I remember his name I'm there. not sure. Um, but the thing, I, the thing I noticed there, and, and Mickey's kind of summed it up really at, at Joseph Chamberlain, is that um, central Birmingham in places, in places can feel like a tough spot, you know? Yeah. It's kind of run down in places and, you know, it's a bit... It's a bit gritty. Yeah, and, and we're all around where we yeah, were. Yeah, quite like a, that. A, a lot around there. I mean, you've got the new Bull Ring, which is just off, uh, just not too far. Yeah, that's the ta- that's the city centre, Georgina. I made that mistake, Georgina. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not not like a fighting Bull Ring. I think pre- I think previously it was a Bull Ring, as in they they um, it's where like the cattle were presented, almost like the mark, the cattle market kind of thing. Yeah. No, 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 not that kind of Bull Ring. Um, so yeah, and then. I mean, it was like a little haven, wasn't it, Joseph yeah. Chamberlain? Six Four. Oh, I nice, re- yeah. really enjoyed being there. Yeah. Ni- nice and place. And we found this all the time when we go to schools that, it, like, the building can be nice, and the, the building here was nice, obviously new. Um, but it's just the people that make it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's just lovely people. We went to a real mix of schools. I mean, I think it's fair to say, although we've been to a number recently in, in recent weeks for inset to, to deliver inset and things, we weren't in any in- independent schools this week. No. And I think, I think. That in itself. I mean, I don't know what representation we had of teachers in the independent sector. I would say they're quite un- underrepresented, yeah. even though there are a couple of really notable exceptions. <clears throat> Stuart on yeah. Friday afternoon would be a good example. But I feel the independent sector was really underrepresented yeah. within that training. Now, I don't know what that's... I mean, to be fair, I mean, uh, Karen, Davies, Stuart, both from very, very reputable independent schools. Yeah. Um, but a, but across those hundreds of teachers we saw, I don't think there was a heavy representation of independent no. school teachers. I'm not sure what that suggests. Don't know. Look, wait, it could be nothing. I mean, it could just be, it yeah. could just be luck. I mean, it yeah. might. It could be. It could be the fact that a lot of independent schools are on holiday all the time or, already. So why yeah, would yeah. Yeah. people like Stuart and Karen come on? I mean, Karen, who lives in Brussels and was back, it was it was back in West Wales for the, the uh, for the holidays and came across to Swindon. So I mean, it took a bit of an effort on his part, bless him. Yeah. And then, I mean, I'm saying this, and I'm now thinking about Joe Salvadori, who was in Qatar, yeah. who's based in a school in Qatar, came, yeah. was obviously back over as well, but he came along to Maxfield. Yeah. But I do feel there was an under-representation of independent schools. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm sure there is. Not sure why. Sure. Not sure why. I'm sure, I'm sure there's nothing particularly important in that. No. Um, but w- I, think, I think one of the key summary points I'd make, Mike, and I, you know, I don't really care whether anyone listens to this or watches this or not, but I am now more certain than ever. I am now, I was pretty certain before, and now I have utter conviction towards the broad educational model that we are, 
that we are um, advocating. Yeah. I am now certain of it. Now, that's not to say it will sort of ideologically remain exactly as it is. I'm sure we'll develop and refine it. I think we already have since the tour. But I have no doubt in my mind now whatsoever about the massive superiority, if done well, of this model over what could be broadly described as the current or traditional model. And that's a very reaffirming thing because if we'd have gone out on that week and let's say let's say it hadn't gone very well and people weren't interested <laughs> and people were like, what's all this garbage and it's not going to work in my environment, um, that, that would have been obviously really problematic for us. But I, I mean, uh, I cannot express the amount of affirmation yeah. that I got from that. And, <clears throat> and a lot of criticism and critical insight as well. Yeah. But the balance was way in, in yeah. on the side of, of the... But I think most, most of the criticism that, that people had or barriers that they they were look. I don't think people were criticizing it from like a personal no, 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 thing. No. They were just saying like in my school this is going to be difficult because yeah. of whatever. Where I don't have my own classroom. Yeah, and and those those barriers are just they're barriers nonetheless. But they they're just small barriers along yeah. the way. Like if if somebody is convicted enough, then they'll make it work. I mean it. it I mean ultimately it doesn't mean that the model doesn't work. It just means that they've got a few extra steps to go through. Yeah. Rather than just taking the direct easy route to get there, they've got a couple yeah. of additional hurdles. Yeah. Uh, to get over it. and and that's okay that, that's kind of where a lot of the learning and excitement is that you do have to go over those additional hurdles that was certainly my experience but i mean it's it's fascinating really mike i'm ever so proud because we are we are literally saying here um we have i think proven that a a, a self-paced self-directed classroom with the teacher not at the front of the classroom and the learners directing their own um, experiences through the classroom can and will work in the British educational system. And I, I'm yeah. extremely <clears throat> excited about yeah. that because as, as many, as, as good as things are on um, sharing spaces, as good as some of those star teachers are online, nobody else is talking about things on this level. Nobody yeah. else is putting their neck on the line to, to say, look, this, this is the learning model that we believe should be in schools today. And it's a hell of a relief that it works. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a bit in trouble if it didn't work. Yeah, I mean, but imagine there's like lots session. of things that um, came back. Like, oh, uh, during the session or after the session, oh yeah, but my classroom's already really active. Mm. You know, and that's, like, I'm sure it is. I'm sure there's lots of. We've kind of went out there and presented like, this is the current model. Teachers stand at the front and um, lecture to their class, and that's it. It's kind of like the extreme clearly it's not like that in reality there's lots of people who have really really great things going on in their classroom <clears throat> but the the comment that came back a few times was yeah but my classroom's already really active and i, the, I think those people have missed the point at, at that point until it was talked about a little bit yeah. more that this isn't just about activity levels in the classroom yeah it's about the fact that can can those students go forward and back past the point at which you are t traditionally delivering you know, if, if you're delivering the muscular system lesson three, can students go to f lesson four and two, or can they go back to a previous topic? E yeah. Even within that lesson, if they, if they're, um, if it's really uh, innovative, you've got really great things. You, you've got, I don't know, whatever you want, technology or collaborative learning going on, or different choice of activities or whatever. They, they may well be self-paced to a degree in a lesson. Yeah. But what we're arguing is, can they, can they be self-paced across lessons? Yeah. I. I... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, ima imagine a learning, I mean, forget what we've talked about so far. Imagine teachers, a learning environment where students had utter ownership of their own learning, who had access to the best teacher theoretically on the planet. We're not saying we're there right now, just theoretically. <clears throat> where resources were available continuously, where the student worked at the exact pace and direction which was relevant to the individual where the only target that for each student and was achieved every time is mastery of every single task. Imagine that classroom. Well, we are delivering it, yeah. and we are advocating it, and we are providing that, or at least the opportunity of that, to students uh, and, to, and to teachers. And, um, you know, my opinion is people, people need to start paying attention and yeah. people need to start getting on board. One, and again, one of the things I'm sort of most proud about from last week, it's it's a really small point, is we didn't sell a single thing. No. You know, I'm not saying our commercial side won't benefit from it because, of course, it probably will. But I, I'm really proud that we went round those ten sessions and we did not attempt to sell commercially anything. Yeah. We simply sold an idea, 
and we provided an image of that idea which I think was was really effective and relevant for people and I'm I'm really really proud that we did that and I'm and I think that you know as I said there might be a knock on impact for us and our commerciality and and sustainability longer term but the fact that we've put ourselves out to do that and you know that I said to you a couple of times last week the fact that we thought about this tour and didn't decide not to do it because <clears throat> uh, we probably it's the obvious thing to There's do is oh, no, don't that, this yeah. But I'm ever so proud of that, and that, and yeah. that we, and we went and that. And a, and a small thing for me, and I said, it, I said it to Mike earlier today, and I don't know if people can put themselves into this situation as well, was that Mike, Mike started working with us uh, in January, and look, I've never been, I've been a boss in the sense of being like a, a middle and senior manager before, sometimes well, sometimes badly. Some some people might be listening to this, even on the <laughs> end of the badly, but um, I've never been a, a business owner where I'm employing someone until very recently. And the fact that you and I went round for five days, having that level of proximity, rooming in every place that we went in, um, traveling that many that much distance, having the kind of the catastrophic <laughs> moments of popping wheels yeah. and and losing computers and this sort of thing, and the fact we came, in my opinion at least, came out of that like with a, with a much stronger bond and colleagueship blending into friendship. I think there was a bit there were bits of that before, but actually I have to say that I'm I'm really happy about that and i think yeah. whatever we do as as colleagues i think that will be a, a fundamental part of our long-term relationship and i know like men are not really supposed to talk about this stuff <laughs> like you know we're supposed to talk about football and tits and whatever <laughs> 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 oh yeah is that funny that one, isn't it, George? and lager but i know i really want to say i really want to say this because i think it's important to to, to stress this i i'm I, I i'm really i'm really happy about it and um yeah really proud of that nice. well likewise i have to fight back the tears Oh, wrong one. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's um, yeah. I mean, we were literally together twenty four hours a day yeah. for five days. Yeah, that's so, a lot yeah. of stress for colleagues. That's a lot of time. I, I didn't. I, it's really weird, really. I didn't have a single moment. I didn't have a single. <laughs> I forgot that one, didn't you? What you, what you were playing with the blue tech? <laughs> I didn't have a single moment, and I'm not expecting you to reciprocate this comment. By the way, I didn't have a single moment where I wished you weren't there. You know what I mean? Whether it was in the sessions in the hotel having a drink having dinner yeah whatever it was it was i really it was really good i, I only had a handful <laughs> <laughs> well that's fair enough i mean maybe, maybe i'm joking maybe, maybe you know maybe maybe for uh, funny enough i mean i i we did have one moment apart mate well apart from going to the toilet obviously oh yeah, well, yeah sh showering yeah. Get <laughs> but um but we did have one and it was on the last it was the thursday evening where i, I went down and uh used the internet down in the lobby while you while you stayed up and had a shower so it's probably about yeah. half an hour yeah that was probably the only probably. and and when um no when you went off to, to your uh oh yeah of course fix, yeah the car fix mo session yeah. then yeah the car fix moments then but um yeah well, well, I, it's a real yeah. highlight for me yeah no likewise definitely and uh, i've been very lucky i mean <laughs> My working career, I've I've worked in brilliant places with brilliant teams, with one exception. I'm not going to say who they are because they probably already know. If, <laughs> if any of them, I'm sure, they wouldn't hear this. But and I, I had one really insidious experience of of nasty, nasty colleagueship. Um, and uh, yeah, Georgina remembers. <laughs> and um, and it's so nice because that that was my most recent employment. Yeah. Um, so it's so nice to again for me. You know, I had brilliant experiences for fifteen years. A really tough experience in schools. Then two years working on my own, and now to have this sort of developing colleagueship, obviously with Martha and Natasha. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I feel really good about that. I have to say, for me, it's really solidified that idea of working in a team. It's really yeah. great. Yeah, it's cool. Well, Natasha, yeah, Natasha is is my well. No one's married, but she's kind of my sister in law, isn't she? Because you're not going to get that blue tech on the mix, are you? <laughs> so, look, I guess I guess we're probably going to wrap wrap this up. I think we've had a, a peak audience of about five or six people, <laughs> so uh, I don't think uh, I don't think we need to get sort of too too it's excited exciting. with about this. But hopefully, hopefully, people might tune in and have a look at it on review and stuff. I guess that's the thing. It's on, it's on there. People can just tune back in whenever they want if they're interested. Yeah, and look, I think some of the things I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do an online tour session at some point as well. Yeah. So that people who didn't attend can can have a look at what we did and have a look at the resources that we um that we developed and I I think there's a whole lot more. And look, I'm going to I'm going to say right now that um I'm going to be looking for hosts for the tour 2018 within mm -hmm. a matter of days. Yeah, I think because so. Because there's no doubt yeah. that we're going to be presenting this yeah. again and and building this and it needs to put pressure on us also. 
to push and promote that model further because we, we must not let it get static because we're yeah. really onto something here. Yeah. And I think it's essential that we, um, yeah. yeah. That, that and it'd be nice to hear from anybody as well. Yeah, like, there's already some action on Twitter from um, um, North Kesterburn. Yeah, really um, interesting. Who Who is that? Who am I thinking of? Gary Walters. Gary Walters. Um, what, what a legend he is, by yeah, the way. Yeah, real nice guy. Real don't don't forget that day we went there. They, I won't say what it is, it's none of our business, but they told us what it was. They had some really difficult news as a department that day. And, yeah. they, and they still hosted us yeah. and had such a good session. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, he, he's already kind of like actioned it in, yeah, in his yeah. th- it was a session on diet mm. and uh, put some stuff on Twitter. It's really interesting. It's really good. He renamed the uh, devices the yeah, cyber table, which yeah, is cool. That's nice. Um, so yeah, it's already actually. So we'd just really like to hear from it, especially anybody on the tour who has done stuff mm. uh, or or parts of it. You know, we talked about how you can adopt part of the model or whole of the model, whatever. Yeah. Um. Anybody, or even if you're just thinking about doing it, just get in touch. We really want to just carry the conversation on. We don't want to wait till next tour to to be talking to people about this again. So yeah, I agree. Anybody's welcome to come into the office or hang out online. Well, and... I think I think that's a really nice thing to say as well. I mean, we've got uh, Lloyd Spacey who's going to come in. Uh, well, we're doing it on Skype, but he's going to be on a live show with us later yeah. in the week, Wednesday, or it might even be tomorrow actually. Tomorrow, oh, wow. can't remember what time it is. Sometime tomorrow, I have to have a look. Nice. And he's going to do a live show with us. So Lloyd Spacey is head of PE. He's based just outside Bristol, and I won't I won't sort of give a spoiler in terms of what we're going to be talking about. But Lloyd had a very difficult experience. Um, with his health earlier um, uh, last summer and he, he's kind of yeah, anyway I won't say too much but I think people are going to find it a really really interesting situation yeah. what he's been through and how he's how he's managed to, to literally get back on his feet so I'm looking forward to talking to him about that and anyway no, more importantly just have a chat with him he's a good lad Lloyd likes a joke likes a beer <laughs> likes his rugby nice. very, very nationalistic yeah. to, the, to the Welsh <laughs> I believe especially as a man living in England uh, Welshman living in England I should say so I'm looking forward to that and yeah, and we're really, really interested. Tom Morrison, who's the head of P uh, Warminster, yeah, is going to come on as well. Yeah, uh, I've been speaking to Alan Reed, who is a uh, curriculum manager at uh, Farm from College, biggest A level P provision in the country. Looking forward to getting him on as well. There's a number of other people going to get on, and we're going to have more and more of these chats. Uh, Alan is also a friend. Yeah, well, he like he likes to call him my call himself <laughs> my friend. I'll, 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 he's not he's not getting the official badge. You know, he's not getting the official badge just yet. But but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we're interested in getting getting more people onto this, and uh, I have to say for us as well, Mike. After our day today, this is um, it's been a bit of a change because all we've done is quiz development. Today. Yeah, it's just been trudging. Through damn questions. boring. Yeah. So it's been it's been nice valuable. Break. Nice yeah. break to to get this done. And for anyone who's tuned in, we um, yeah, we we really appreciate it. And uh, I somehow need to figure out how how I stop the. Got on here, right? Uh, that's right. No, that that right. will. I've got to stop. stop. I've got to stop the stream. Ah, yes, actually, you can stop the stream there. So. If you hit the little the thing that's the green upload button, it'll stop. Cheers, folks, to everyone.